Hello and welcome to Today in History. My name is Sotonye Afiasimama. If you're here for the first time, welcome to my channel. If you're visiting or a returning subscriber, welcome back. So, click the notification bell if you haven't subscribed yet so that you receive updates of my video uploads. Let's get cracking. This time we're going to move go back 503 years to the past and we shall roll back our blind the year is 1517 and his name is Martin Luther so this isn't Martin Luther King this is the original Martin Luther 1517 is the year and as you can see here, it's self-explanatory. Martin Luther wrote a list of arguments against the church, against church practices, called the 95 Theses. He posted the 95 Theses on the door in the town of Wittenberg and welcomed debate of his ideas. So the picture again is self-explanatory. This was the day in 1517 that Martin Luther a monk nailed the 95 Theses on the doors of a church. He also called it a manifesto and it turned a protest that turned the protest about an indulgent scandal into the Protestant Reformation. So it had to do, one of the theses had to do with the selling of indulgences. Um, so go, you can go do a bit of research about what that is, um, that was all about. But I suspect from my memory, very faint memory, it was about selling prayers, you know, to prevent people from going to hell. I think, I think that's what it was. But yeah, if you um, have the time, do your research, find out about what selling indulgences were. Let's move on to the year eighteen sixty. So. On this day, Juliet Gordon Law, who, or Law, pictured here, she was the lady who founded the Girl Scouts of the United States of America. On this day, she was born in Savannah, Georgia. So again, Juliet Gordon Law, founder of the Girl Scouts of America, was born on this day in Savannah, Georgia, USA. Also born on this day is Chiang Kai-shek, Chinese statesman, pictured right here. Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek, born on this day, Chinese statesman. In 1826, on this day, Harry Houdini, this was the day Harry Houdini died from perino peritonitis, stemming from a stomach injury. Harry Houdini was a magician and escape artist, as you can see from the chains on his hands. This was the day he died. I'll show you some more pictures of Harry Houdini. That's a man, Harry Houdini, who died on this day. Escape artist. Dan Rather, born on this day in 1931. He's an American newscaster. There's a poster here which is self-explanatory. I'm going to read it out for you. The dream begins with a teacher who believes in you. So this is one of his quotes. Who tugs and pushes and leads you to the next plateau. Sometimes poking you with a sharp stick called truth. So, this is a quote by Dan Rather. Let's move on now to the year 1941. Now, this is a fascinating one. 1941 on this day. If this doesn't give you a clue, then I will give you... Uh, I'll, I'll show you another picture which would give you an idea of what happened on this day. But, yeah, this is the sculptor who helped shape Mount Rushmore. 
a bit about Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore, if you haven't heard about Mount Rushmore before. So after 15 years of work, the Mount Rushmore National Memorial in the Black Hills of South Dakota was completed. The colossal sculpture features the heads of presidents George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Abraham Lincoln. Mount Rushmore National Memorial is centered on a colossal sculpture carved onto the granite face of Mount Rushmore in the Black Hills in Keystone, South Dakota. Sculptor pictured here, his name is Godson Borglum, created the sculpture's design and oversaw the project's execution from 1927 to 1941 with the help of his son, Lincoln Borglum. The sculpture features the 60-foot heads of presidents George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Abraham Lincoln, mentioned that earlier already, as recommended by Borglum. The four presidents were chosen to represent the nation's birth, growth, development, and preservation respectively. South Dakota historian Dewan Robinson is credited with conceiving the idea of carving the likenesses of noted figures into the mountains of the Black Hills of South Dakota in order to promote tourism in the region. The mountain into which it was carved is known to the Lakota Sioux, so the Lakota Sioux Indians as six grandfathers. That's interesting. We have four grandfathers there at the moment. Um, so I was just thinking, you know, while I was um, getting this presentation together, who the other two presidents to make up the six grandfathers should be, if there was enough room on um, the, on Mount Rushmore to add two more heads, who would those two heads be? I mean, it would be interesting um, what Americans would say, uh, they would, who, which two presidents they would vote to be on yeah, Mount Rushmore. Anyway, so that's what happened on this day, Mount Rushmore. The four heads of the four former presidents of the United States um, who feature on Mount Rushmore um, was um, completed by sculptors. So more pictures like I promised. So that's Mount Rushmore before the heads. Funnily, it's 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 weird because look at that, look at that there. Don't know if you can see my cursor. It does look like two heads. That kind of looks looks a bit like <laughs> the Sphinx, you know. Two more heads there. Anyway, so that's Mount Rushmore before the faces were carved, and uh, that's work in progress. Mount Rushmore. Some more pictures. Mount Rushmore completed. A close a close up view. There we go. Let's move on to the year nineteen eighty four. It was shock, sadness for the world, especially for India, as Indira Gandhi was assassinated on this day in nineteen eighty four. She was a uh, prime minister at the time of her assassination. Um, she was born on the 19th of November, 1917, in Praia, Kraj. So I'll read a little bit about this lady. Um, people hear the name Gandhi and assume that she is related to Mahatma Gandhi, but she actually isn't. Now, Gandhi apparently is a very popular name in India. So Indira Priya Dashini Gandhi was an Indian politician and a central figure of the Indian National Congress. She was the first and, to date, only female Prime Minister of India. Indira Gandhi was the daughter of Jawahar Nehru, the first Prime Minister of India. She served as Prime Minister from January 1966 to March 1977, and again from January 1980 until her assassination on the 31st of October 1984, making her the second longest serving Indian Prime Minister 
after her father. So that again is Indira Priya Dashini Gandhi, who was assassinated on this day, former Prime Minister of India. Today we got some sh sad news. I wouldn't say shocking because he is, he has been an old man for quite a few decades now. Or well, we got news, or I got news today. I'm sure hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of people around the world are now aware that good old Sean Connery, Sir Sean Connery, famous for James Bond, Agent 007 died today at the age of 90. Um, news is still coming in. We're not sure if he died today or, or, or yesterday, the 30th of October, but the world was made aware today that um, Sir Sean Connery has died in Bahamas of all places. You know, the guy was enjoying his life in a nice Caribbean country, away from the United Kingdom, from Scotland, you know, the land of his birth, cold, and windy Scotland. So a bit about Sir Thomas Sean Connery. He was born on the 25th of August in 1930. He was a Scottish actor and producer who won an Academy Award, two BAFTA Awards, one being a BAFTA Academy Fellowship Award and three Golden Globes, including the Cecil B. DeMille Award and a Henrietta Award. Connery was the first actor to portray the character James Bond in film, starring in seven Bond films, every film from Dr. No to You Only Live Twice, plus Diamonds Are Forever and Never Say Never Again, between 1982, sorry, 1962 and 1983. He was also a Navy man. He served in the UK's Royal Navy, 1946 to 1949 and his rank was able seaman so you become an able seaman when you've served in the navy for more than two years you know you gain um, a lot of experience from that and um, his unit was the hms formidable so hms for those who don't know stands for her majesty's service in our case because we have the queen in charge of the united kingdom at the moment but if there was a king in charge it would have been it would be his Majesty's service. So, Sir Sean Connery, who we lost today, the 31st of October, like I said, news is still coming in to confirm exactly when he died. Um, he lives in the, or he used to live in the Bahamas, and as you know, there's a time difference between the UK and Bahamas, several hours, presumably five, six, maybe seven hours, I would say five, five or six hours um, behind the UK. So um, if he died on the 30th of October, and we will be getting the news very likely on the 31st of October today. So very likely he died yesterday, the 30th of October. Okay, some more pictures of Sir Sean Connery, Agent 007, also known as James Bond, who died on this day. So best wishes, he says here. Sir... Sean Connery. This is an autograph which he signed. Some more pictures. That's him receiving his knighthood. The day he became a sir. Okay, last but not least, this is the last day of Black History Month, celebrated in October in the United Kingdom and in some other European countries. It's celebrated in February in the United States and Canada. So a bit about Black History Month. For those of you who do not know, it originated in the United States and is now celebrated in a number of countries. In the US and Canada, like I said earlier, the month takes place in February, but it has always been marked in October in the UK, Ireland and the Netherlands. Its origins can be traced back to the 1920s in the USA, where a Black History Week was introduced by historian Carter G. Woodson in 1929. The aim of Black History Month in the UK was for the local community to challenge racism 
as well as increase education about black history that was not taught in schools. I like this visual here, you know, bringing America, the United States to Africa, um, where we have probably the largest population, uh, well, Black History Month started in America anyway. So maybe not the largest population of African-American peoples, but very close. Some would argue South America has more um, African-Americans or Black people than um, North America does. But So wherever Black people are found in the world, they're here in the UK as well, in Europe, in Asia, you know. Um, yeah, so Black History Month in the UK, um, it's the last day of that celebration. So I'll show you some more pictures. Of, um, this is a match in Washington. Someone has painted a match in Washington, and you can see the lady in yellow, um, Rosa Parks, and then obviously um, Martin Luther King Jr., next to her to protest, obviously, racism, inequality, and all the ills of um, prejudice against African-Americans that exist in the U.S., that used to exist and still exist today. Some more pictures. These ones with quotes. Nelson Mandela is the first one here. He says, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Next, Frederick Douglass. I've talked about Frederick Douglass in one of my videos, Nelson Mandela as well. It is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Next quote, Rosa Parks, the lady in the painting as well, the lady who refused to give up her seat on the bus um, what, what did she say? She said, I had no idea that history was being made. I was just tired of giving up. So that's Rosa Parks. Next we have Martin Luther King Jr. So presumably he was named after the uh, original Martin Luther, who I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, video. But anyway, so that's Martin Luther King Jr. He says, I have decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden to bear. So background to this um, quote, I guess, um, with the treatment of African-Americans in the United States, with all the violence, the unlawful killings, and so on and so forth, you get to a point where, you know, when you start uh, at the beginning of conflicts like this, at the beginning of um awareness you know you get to an age where you realize um you're being treated differently because of your color you know i think about my children now who are 13 and 10 um getting to that age of awareness you know aware of the environment aware that in a country where over 95 percent of the population is white different from from them and um they may at the age the ages they are now begin begin to see offshoots of um, racism. I don't know if offshoots is the right word to use, but, you know, because they're becoming more aware, their, their eyes are being opened, you know, um, racism which they wouldn't have seen when they were younger. They, they would begin to be aware of it now. They're reading more, they're watching TV more, they're, listening, they're more aware of the environment, essentially. So um, you get to a point when, you know, you're being... Racially profiled, let's, let's use that phrase now, racially profiled, you know, you've been treated badly or poorly because of your color, the skin, color of your skin. And initially, you're going to react angrily. Most people will react angrily. When you get to a point and say, what then? You think to yourself, what's the point in being so angry and hateful? Why not use a different tactic? Why not challenge uh, stereotypes with improving yourself, with, with actually loving people, with getting to understand why people are afraid of you because you're different. Why people hate you because you're different, you know? So you grow, presumably those who want to grow, those who want to make sure that racism ends. Um, some would argue that if you don't use force, nothing is gonna change. But force has been used since the 60s, you know? Um, a lot has changed, but there's still a lot that needs to be done. You know, so I think at the end of the day, um, it's a bit of both. 
to be the both. You need to be forceful and firm without being violent. You need to also show love as well. So let's go. Let's see more quotes on this. Um, prominent African Americans, prominent black people from all over the world who have talked about um, their own um, philosophies of life, especially relating to racism. So good Marshall says, in recognizing the humanity of our fellow beings, we pay ourselves the highest tribute. Okay, recognizing the humanity of our fellow beings. So no matter what race someone comes from, you have to recognize that they're human. You know, they're prone to making mistakes. They're prone to being racist. You also, as a black man or black woman, you're prone prone to being racist as well. You know, so we need to recognize our humanity. We're not perfect. You know, okay. Next quote. Action, it says here. That's the title of this one. Life is not a spectator sport. If you're going to spend your whole life in the grandstand, just watching what goes on, in my opinion, you're wasting your life. And that's by Jackie Robinson. Next is Harriet Tubman. I have also talked about her in one of my videos. She says, every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember, you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars, to change the world, I would say, to change your world as well. Marian Wright Edelman says, education is for improving the lives of others and for leaving your community and world better than you found it. I totally agree. Nelson Mandela says, if you want the cooperation of humans around you, you must make them feel they're important. And you do that by being genuine and Humble. This is another quote from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He says, The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. That is so true. Mary McLeod Bethune, we have powerful potential in our youth and we must have the courage to change old ideas and practices so that we may direct their power toward good ends. I have discovered in life there are ways of getting almost anywhere you want to go if you really want to go. That's a quote by Langston Hughes. Olinda Ricard or Ricard says Black History Month is a time to pay homage to our great ancestors, the lifelong struggles and influence on liberties we have obtained. Mary McLeod Bethune again, for I am my mother's daughter, and the drums of Africa still beat in my heart. Maya Angelou, she says, nothing will work unless you do, <laughs> and it's so true. So simple, so straight to the point. Nelson Mandela. Last but not least, for me, this quote, I have this, I think, on my Facebook profile as well. Now he says, no one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin or his background or his religion. People must learn to hate. And if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love, for love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. On that note, folks, we shall end today's Today in History. It was a long one, forgive me, understandably. There's quite a lot that has happened today. Um, I did, and I did spend some time on Black History Month for obvious reasons, you know, um, not just because I'm black, but because I think that we all need to appreciate um, each other, in, no matter what race we come from, what tribe we come from, what religion we come from, what sex, what sexual orientation, you know, the list goes on and on. We need to be able to relate to each other and with each other, appreciate each other. Um yeah, so I think that we we all want to live in a world where peace reigns, you know. Um, we want to be sure 
that when our children go out of the house and they're going to come back um, bruised or, or, you know, injured because of racism or because of sexism or any other of the isms, you know. Right. On that note, folks, we have come to another, to the end of another edition of Today in History for the 31st of October, the very last day in October 2020. Hopefully, I shall catch you guys tomorrow, brand new month of November, for another edition of Today in History. My name again is Sotonia Fiasimama. Do not forget to subscribe. You can do that by clicking the notification bell so that you receive updates of my video uploads. Once again, thanks again for dropping by. See you tomorrow. Stay safe. Like this video if you like it. And share this with your family and friends. Who knows? They might like it as well. Take care. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.